Grimpa Marvel Mania. The Nintendo Wii had potential. Sure, that potential was almost never used in the 11 years the Nintendo Wii has been around, but games like Korra Rimpa proved the Wii to be at least a console with a few hidden gems. Looking at this footage, it's pretty easy to draw parallels between this and another certain maze game where you roll a ball around, that being Super Monkey Ball. And yes, there are quite a few similarities on the surface, but if you've taken the time to try to master both games' mechanics in the way that I have, you come to find out eventually that they look and play almost nothing alike, so I don't really think it's an apt comparison. This is mainly due to the fact that Super Monkey Ball is a lot more precision based than Korva Rimpa, and as such has a much tighter physics engine. In Korva Rimpa, because the game uses tilt controls, things like this are very much so possible, and are much easier to pull off than something similar in Super Monkey Ball. So in this sense, the two games take radically different approaches in terms of game design. That's not to say either game is bad though, this is an underrated games video for a reason and I'd be hard pressed to call Super Monkey Ball anything short of one of my favorite games of all time, but to me it's kind of like comparing The Legend of Zelda to Beetle Adventure Racing. Both games are good, but they share almost no similarities. In short, if you want a good Super Monkey Ball S game for the Wii, too bad it doesn't exist. The basic objective of Core Rimpa is to navigate a marble through a maze, collect all of the orange crystals to unlock the exit, and win the game. There's also one elusive green crystal per stage that's hard to get to, provided you're not insanely lucky with some random spash dot. These are redeemed to unlock things. And my goodness gracious, look at all of the things there are to unlock. And in terms of gameplay, that's really about it. I never said that this game exceeded in something overly complex. This game works for a variety of reasons, but it most predominantly excels in its replay value. Because, if we're being generous, there's only 65 levels in the entire game, most of which can be beaten within 5 minutes. The game puts a lot of emphasis on speed, mostly to incentivize the practice makes perfect philosophy so often used in games like this. And like I said before, the game's physics engine is so easily manipulated that it makes a lot of levels beatable within 10 seconds or less. There's no real boundary as to where your marble can and cannot go, either. So, it almost goes without saying that this game is practically made for speedrunning. In the right hands, this 7th generation Wii game can be beaten in 30 minutes or less. And there is plenty of room for improvement as well because there are only 3 people that run the game. And as I'm currently writing this at 1 in the morning in the middle of a GDQ, the world record run for this game only has 94 views. In short, if I'm recommending this game to anyone, it would probably be the speedrunning community. That's not to say a casual wouldn't be able to enjoy this game for what it is, but when you take into account how short and difficult this game is to complete, on top of physical copies of this game being pretty hard to find now, I'd be hard pressed to say that this is a game for everyone. So all things considered, it's pretty much your call on this one. Side note, there was a sequel to this game called Marble Saga, also on the Wii, but I've never played it and therefore can't really comment on it, just letting you know that it exists.